Hey, Box developers. It's Alex, your developer advocate here at Box. I'm here today with Lori Voss from Llama Index. We are here to discuss all things AI, Box, and Llama Index. Hey, Lori. How's it going? Hi. I'm good, thanks. Awesome. Well, before we dive into our topic today, um, I want to get a pulse on how you're feeling about AI in general. Um, I mean, excited. That's why I have the job I have. <laughs> yeah. uh, I have a long uh, tech career, uh, and about 12 months ago, uh, I got really, really excited about the idea that there is now software that can understand the data it's looking at. Like, fundamentally, for the last you know, 20 odd years that I've been working in tech, all that software can do is move data around, right? It can turn it into arrays that move to other arrays that go into databases that turn out into lists and like, you know, fundamentally it can, it can shove data around really fast and that's impressive, but now you have software that can understand what it's looking at and say, this data is important. This data means this thing. I can summarize it. I can turn it into other stuff. Uh, and all, that was previously the domain of humans. Uh, so the idea that you can, uh, that software can understand what it's reading is a huge fundamental shift, which is why I'm excited. Yeah, because it goes beyond just, like you said, making lists, looking at arrays, and making other arrays. Um, so for the, our viewers out there that don't necessarily know who you are, what you do, can you give us just a brief synopsis? Uh, sure. Uh, I am the VP of Developer Relations at Llama Index right now. Uh, in a prior life, I was uh, co-founder of NPM Inc., so you may recognize me from uh, the days of talking endlessly about JavaScript. Uh, but these days, I'm talking about AI. Yeah, awesome. I love it. Um, so let's start with, what is Llama Index? What can it do? So Llama Index is a whole bunch of things, all of which start with Llama. Okay. Um, Not the animal. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we started off and are still at our core um, a pair of open source projects. Uh, open source free software uh, that helps you build AI applications, generative AI applications. One of them is in Python uh, and the other one is in TypeScript. Okay. Um, we also have uh, a service called Llama Parse, which is getting very, very popular. It is specifically for taking complex documents. So think words, PowerPoints, Excel spreadsheets, sure. that kind of stuff. Things that LLMs are not natively very good at understanding mm -hmm. and parsing them into a form that they can understand. You're right. um, and that is a free sign up on our website, cloud.llamaindex.ai. We also have an enterprise offering called Llama Cloud. I told you everything is called Llama something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Llama Cloud is an end-to-end -end, uh, platform for uh, enterprises to ingest data, uh, parse it, index it, uh, retrieve it, and then turn it into LLM applications. Okay. And then uh, we also have a thing called Llama Hub, okay. uh, which is a big registry of open source software. Um, that helps build generative AI applications. So connectors to every database that exists, uh, adapters for every vector store, adapters for every single LLM, uh, pre-built tools for when you're building LLM agents, like a whole world of software that people can just uh, download for free and incorporate into their applications. Right, so I think that leads me to my next question, which is if we think about enterprises as a whole and just how much content an enterprise has, it's stored in multiple places. So. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of where Llama steps in and helps connect it all together? Or how does it work in the, like, the larger enterprise content ecosystem? Yeah, the thing that we do is we are a, a data orchestration framework. So Llama Index uh, allows you to connect to all of the data stores that you have in your organization uh, and build generative AI applications that uh, combine all of those data sources. Got it. So if we look at Box and Llama, we are currently working on, or I actually think we now have released uh, a brand new integration that connects the two. Mm -hmm. um, what can developers do to learn how to use you know, the new integration that we have? Um, so we have uh, extensive documentation <laughs> yeah, sure. uh, at docs.llamaindex.ai okay. um, and also at ts.llamaindex.ai for the TypeScript folks. Okay. But fundamentally, uh, what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to, to unleash uh, your uh, enterprise data uh, and turn it into enterprise applications. Get it out of where it is living, uh, uh, usually index it, hence our name. Um, turn it into information that you can retrieve based on its meaning okay. uh, rather than uh, you know, keyword search. Uh, and then build generative AI applications around that. Like I said, 
generative AI, it understands what it's reading. So that's, that's where most of the interesting applications come from. Yeah. So if we go a little bit deeper into the weeds there, how is Llama store, like how, when you're saying it's going to look at the data and understand what it means, mm -hmm. how is it actually happening? Uh, that's a great question. So um, fundamentally what LLMs are doing, to zoom out a little bit, yeah, beyond Box is, and Llama. Uh, what LLMs are doing is they are uh, they are creating a probability model of how language works. Okay. So if you imagine the phrase, uh, the cat sat on the, your brain automatically goes, the mat. Because you've heard that phrase lots and lots of times. You're pretty sure that's the next word that I'm going to say. Uh, that is what LLMs are doing at enormous mind-boggling scale, is they are making predictions about what the next word in any sentence will be. It turns out when you do that at big enough scale, uh, the results become quite spooky. It can begin to predict things in a way that looks like reasoning to the point that in the AI industry, people have sort of stopped arguing about whether or not these things are reasoning or not. They look like they're reasoning and it's close enough to reasoning that we may as well call it reasoning whether or not a philosopher would agree. Right. Um, Is it passing the Turing test, for example? Right. So, uh, to do that, you turn uh, words into numbers, into vast arrays of numbers that encode the meaning. Um, so what you do when you're creating uh, a retrieval augmented generation app, which is uh, the kind of app that uh, you most frequently create with Llama Index, is uh, you take all of your data and you convert it into these numbers which encode their meaning. Then you take your query, like, you know, what's the capital of South Dakota, and you run that through the same conversion process. You turn that into numbers. That's called, uh, the process of turning the words into numbers is called embeddings, because you're embedding stuff in vector space. I don't know why we made the term so complicated. You're turning <laughs> it into numbers. Okay. Um, so what you do is you take your query and you embed it the same way that you embedded your data, and then in this vast space of possible numbers, your query and the answer to your query are mathematically nearby to each other ah. in this vast multidimensional space of numbers. So you can do very simple math. You can say, I've got these words which are my query. Find the words that are nearby uh, in vector space and give them back to me. Right. And that is, what a that is the retrieval part of retrieval augmented generation. You've found words that are similar to the words that you were looking for in meaning, not, right. in just, you know, not just keyword matching. Uh, and then you give that to an LLM and you say, here's the query I got. Here are the chunks of the documents that, I, that, that uh, Vector Search believes are most relevant to this query. Tell me about them. So the result is something like, you know, you ask what the capital of South Dakota is, you're going to find a document that mentions what the capital of South Dakota is or a document about South Dakota. Uh, and the LLM will read that one and come up with the answer by looking at those chunks of data that it's retrieved. So we've kind of already touched on it a little bit, but what are the use cases you think about that enterprises could do when you connect Box or other content silos with Llama? Like, what are the broader use cases? You mentioned metadata, but what else do you think we could achieve? So there's three big categories of things that you can build um, in generative AI applications that we think about. One is uh, retrieval augmented generation as a category. Okay. Um, just blank. Just being able to say, you know, give me information about, you know, in my vast corpus of data, give me the information that is most relevant to this, and also like summarize it. Tell me what's important, uh, not just, you know. It's not just keyword search giving you, like, here are your documents in your drive. Right. Um, the next one is uh, um, structured data extraction. So imagine you have uh, sales contracts. Okay. Each of them is saying roughly the same thing. They're saying, who is this deal with? How much money is it for? How long does it last? But they're sales contracts. So they're all written in, in English language and like different English language and everybody has red lines and it's all different. And some of different. them could be huge, like right. long, long contracts. And an LLM is capable of, of being given a schema that says, okay, I just want these three bits of information. Read the sales contract, tell me those three bits of information. And it can do that for a thousand sales contracts all at once. And suddenly you have this beautifully formatted data base of what does your what do your sales contracts say and it can be plugged into I'm assuming a workflow that you upload a contract it does what it does without any human interaction for the most part and then it can move on down the flow absolutely and that brings us neatly to uh, the third category of generative AI applications uh, which is workflow automation right. basically uh, you can create autonomous agents Agents are just pieces of software that have access to tools. Those tools can be anything. They can be arbitrary functions. They can be 
uh, generative AI pipelines, they can be structured data extraction pipelines. But you can have an autonomous piece of software that is given a goal and a bunch of tools, and it solves that problem uh, without you having to specify exactly what it was that it needed to do to, to solve that problem. Right, so it can kind of figure out what do I need to do with this information and go beyond without human interaction again. Right, so you, one of my favorite examples is you can imagine it, it reads your emails and decides whether or not it needs to make calendar invitations. Like ah. it, can, it can read your email, it can understand what the email is asking and it can, it can operate a calendar API and say, create a calendar event for a conversation with this person right. without you needing to get involved. Absolutely, so thinking about Llama Index, do you were mentioning I think Llama Hub, mm -hmm. is that part of what the hub has is all these little solutions, or is that just the integrations? Um, it has both. Okay. It has, um, it has uh, these things we call Llama Packs, which are built, uh, pre-built solutions to a lot of the more complex problems. Okay. Um, and also it has agent tools. So uh, like there's a, you know, there's a Gmail one and, a, and a, uh, there's a box one. Um, and there's now a box one. <laughs> it's brand new. Um, but what they're all for is, is basically you know, doing the work. They, pre-built uh, solutions to uh, how do I get an agent able to use this tool. Is Llama Index you know, free for developers to like, go out there and try? Absolutely. It is? Yeah. So if developers did want to learn more about how to combine Llama Index and Boxer, Llama Index to other content silos, what, what would you suggest that they do? Um, our documentation, which I spend my, I pour my heart and soul into, <laughs> I do too. Is <laughs> I is do too. Uh, full of great tutorials. We have a very active uh, Twitter and LinkedIn yep. presence, which is always full of uh, new things that we're doing, plus introductions to the space, uh, and we have uh, a substantial YouTube uh, collection if, for people who prefer to uh, learn from video uh, of all of the stuff that you can do with the with the frameworks. Awesome. So if developers wanted to you know, catch you at other events or webinars, what are some things that you all have coming up? Oh, we have a ton of stuff happening. Uh, we have, um, we are doing a, uh, a month-long hackathon uh, with uh, a company called PingCap, who do a, a vector database called TIDB. I'm not sure at one month th that it still counts as a hackathon. It's, <laughs> it's like just a continuation it's, of the same thing. It's extremely a thon. Um, yeah, extremely. It's an agile hackathon. Yeah. Uh, so we have uh, we have that hackathon in uh, October. We are running our own hackathon. Okay. Um, we do weekly webinars. Uh, we are constantly posting stuff to our blog. There's just a myriad of ways. And of course, there's always us on Twitter. Right. Our, uh, our CEO is very active on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> which I love to see it. may be familiar to you. Yes. Uh, and so uh, there's always new stuff there. Yeah, awesome. Well, Lori, um, thank you so much for joining me today to chat about Box and Llama Index and AI. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for checking out this video on the Box AI Platform API. If you'd like to find out more, please check out our Box AI Developer Zone at developer.box.com. You can follow us on X at Box Platform, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Box, and check out our new LinkedIn Showcase page at Box-Developers.